Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review and comparison of professional grade wire terminal crimpers, both ratcheting style as well as forged plier style. These are really the true high quality wire terminal crimpers. If you're doing production, assembly work, or servicing you know, machines, you may oftentimes use ratcheting style. That way you can really ensure you get a nice high quality crimp. The deal with ratcheting crimpers is that they always ensure once they start ratcheting that you get a full cycle. And these style always have a specific die for really each wire range that you're using. I have two pairs, even though this has a different set of dies. These take the same dies as those I just showed you. They're interchangeable. So you can get these bodies, so you can get different style crimpers just for the type of work you like to do, whether you want shorter ones and they're easier to use terminals, or you can get ones like these, which are long handle and have a shorter jaw. They're extra high leverage if you're perhaps crimping so terminals onto solid core wire. The thing about these and the forged pliers is they really provide a lot of crimps that are uh, really reliable and you don't have to worry so much. You just make sure you get the wire in the terminal and you'll end up with a successful crimp. And obviously these are crimpers for this the common and standard type of wire terminals that you'd find at any hardware store or auto parts store and they do come in red for small wires, say 18 gauge and smaller blue for 14 and 16 gauge and yellow for 12 and 10 gauge and that covers the vast majority of wires that you'd end up crimping in any type of you know normal work whether it's working on cars or anything else if you're working on terminals that are smaller than say 22 gauge real thin wire or large battery cables then you need a different style of crimpers and I've done some reviews of those, but I may do a comparison just to make it easier. But there's hydraulic wire crimpers from Harbor Freight for large scale or big bolt cutter style Burndies that I've done reviews on or even compact heavy duty ratcheting ones. But this would be the style for just most common wire terminals. Now most I'm doing this video because most people when they get kits they usually get you know some wire terminal kit and it comes with a set of crimpers that look like this these are real high quality amps they're a high quality steel and it's extra thick but most kits have ones that are just terrible and you can just grab them and fold them uh, they're just not very high quality at all but this is just the style that they're in they have a couple of little half moon uh, cutouts here for different sizes you know you do your red and blues there yellows there and then this is where you can crimp insulation or some odd size uh, terminals and then there are higher quality I mean these amps are a high quality but basic style there's improved styles such as these here these ideals where you may have the uh, a different type of crimper where it's a little button pushing downwards some integrated cutters one common thing is they have a common imperial small fastener they're little bolt cutters those are the size of the bolt the common size of fasteners you'd run into in electrical work so they include little cutters in them one plate's threaded another one just has a hole in it so you thread it through and cut off the little bolt then there are ones like this where the strippers on front and the crimpers on the back but when you really want to do high quality wire crimps so you don't have to worry about uh, having to squeeze super hard because maybe you're squeeze, uh, putting a terminal on a solid wire or you're using a very high quality say a KS uh, terminal which are use thicker metal and require a lot more force many times with the issues with those type of crimpers is that it's uh, difficult to actually crimp down the connector tightly enough to really provide proper hold on the wire and sometimes you're so worried about doing that you'll actually over crimp and that's the big deal with the ratcheting ones is they all have they're all properly sized they all have proper dies these are kind of like those amp plate steel ones, but these would be like super heavy duty, super thick. These are compound uh, bolt cutter style ones. And these work real great. These are real intend really intended for solid wire. Well, you don't need a wide crimp area, you, but you do need a lot of force in a compact crimper. So a lot of electricians in a tool belt, whether they're working in your house or a job site, will have kind of wire crimper pliers like these. Now these are forged steel pliers with hot rivets that, you know, that cool down and uh, keep the jaws tightly to the, together and are very reliable for a long time. They're made just like any other kind of high quality channel lock or any other Nipex or any other professional grade plier. 
but they're wire terminal crimpers. And so the purpose of these obviously is just to buy a set of these and they'll last you uh, your entire career if you need them to. <laughs> they effectively could crimp uh, hundreds of thousands of wire terminals before ever wearing out any of the crimping portions. Many of these do have integrated wire cutters and we have a nice high quality set of Thomas and Betts. We have a cheaper uh, Garber Bender set which isn't you know ground very well but they're still much better than those plate steel ones because you have a nice high quality set of pliers. What is nice about these is they provide a, a variety of different style of crimping dies, four of them actually, half moons, large and small uh, pin, and then a convoluted style. And then there are ones like these Burndy pliers here, which are use kind of a special type of terminal called a high dent. Um, and the purpose of that terminal is it can take a wide range of wire from 22 all the way through 10 gauge uh, with a single crimp. You can use these on normal style terminals like these and they work out okay. Um, but they kind of provide a, a funky crimp when you don't use Burndy special t terminals. But sometimes I do like them. They seem to work better if you have the terminals that are uh, double insulated or have the integrated heat shrink tubing. These Burndy seem to work a little bit better. And a big difference between, say, the Thomas and Betts, which are higher quality, much higher quality than the uh, Garber Benders, is just because you have uh, a more properly shaped jaw, which is uh, a nice perfect width rather than some odd sanding there. You do have a thicker steel on the beam, longer handles, so you have more leverage. And the handles are also much wider, so there's less pressure. So they're more comfortable to use when you're using them repeatedly over a long term. Whenever using any type of crimpers, whether plate with the bump, what I've learned, I used to. One, well, I should. I'm gonna change, switch gears real fast here. Uh, whenever you use wire terminals, the reason they have those different colors is so when you're crimping them, they actually do hold properly. Oftentimes, the issue is you're using a tiny little 18 gauge wire and a yellow 12 gauge terminal, and you just can't really squash a 12 gauge terminal far enough. To really hold that so that's why they have the different colors the three colors are really for those most common wire sizes but when you get beyond 10 gauge to thick wires uh, they just figure it's obvious so you may have blue terminals uh, but they'll be obviously for a six or four gauge and they'll just be a huge terminal so the colors do repeat themselves but the red is for small blue is for medium and yellow is for large when I've learned about these style with the has the, the high dent there is that these terminals are sheet metal and then they're bent the little collar is bent and rolled up and there's a little gap and over time uh, I've learned that you actually will and even uh, some people commented and I realized in our previous video I would put that up the little gap up at the top no you actually want the flat portion of the the little rolled piece of sheet metal at the top so that the little gap can be down the groove otherwise what can happen and I'll show in a second these kind of pliers are great because you just get plenty of force. You don't have to squeeze super hard and you're able to get a nice high quality crimp without having to worry about really squeezing the beans out of those plate seal pliers. They tend to want to start bending and, and going off to one side or the other and don't ever really crimp properly. But that little dent And I can show you here, I did one where it's the top, and what ended up happening is it really just pushed in one side onto the wire, and the other side stayed up there. So if you do it to where, come on camera, where the little dent is facing more downwards, and I wasn't perfect there, was I? And that sharp piece pushes into the flat back, then both of those wings crimp down the wire in a more reliable fashion you know you always have a solid crimp you give the wire a nice tug you don't have to strip much obviously I stripped too much there and then the insulation sits in this little area to give a little bit of a strain relief and prevent any uh, exposed area and that's generally how these style work and we can show you what uh, some real nice ones look like now these are some old amp or amp excuse me Amphenol. I think it used to be the Amphenol company and then they shortened their name to AMP. Uh, but whenever you see AMP products in computers, you learn about them because when you run into real high quality cables, 
they often have uh, amp connectors, uh, especially in the old days where it's old, you know, 50 and 68 pin and 80 pin SCSI cables. The amp connectors were always these, you know, nice, all cast metal, very high quality connectors. And that's kind of how I learned about the company was through computers. And so whenever I ran into the little, any tools that had the little amp on them, I knew they were going to be high quality tools. And they've been around for a long time. I bought these with the aluminum rivets. I will replace those with something more appropriate. Obviously, <laughs> aluminum rivets and a compound crimper aren't going to work that great. And speaking of these, I noticed that they really, they claim from 16 to 22 gauge, it's kind of using special amp terminals. But what I found with these is they work on the blues grade. If you're really using 14 or 16 gauge wire, uh, those provide just a fantastic crimp. Because the, the dies complete a shorter circle. We'll show you that here. Oh, that one's a little tight. I actually am using 14 gauge wire, so they're, you know, you, a lot of times they're pretty tight trying to get it into the terminal. There we go. These are nice for that because you hardly have to put any pressure. They're half moon, so you can just make sure it's aligned horizontally on either side. You just put the jaws kind of in the middle of where you want it to crimp. And then these, you just do a little bit like that. And it just provides you with this, there we go, this, this, this beautiful two little half moon. And it's so close on each side, it's actually taken that collar and just shrunk it down a little bit. And it's just, you know, you get a nice 360 degree even application of, of force and reduction. And these just hold perfectly. They are super uh, resistant to pull out. And it's really what would be considered an optimal crimp because it's a, instead of even being an oval, such as what one of these are, these are great when you have like steel wire terminals. They make stainless steel wire terminals. Those can get real tough to crimp. And so that's what's great about these uh, is you get all that force because they're compound bolt cutter style. But the issue is, is this ellipse. So it kind of pushes a whole lot in the middle, forcing some of the, the terminal and the wires to squish out this way. And inevitably, there's going to be a small uh, amount of air where using these amphenols here ends up making it this a perfect little circle. It's really quite optimal. You know you've actually squeezed out the airspace, and now that piece of wire is acting like it's just uh, effectively welded to the terminal. And we'll do another comparison against the Amphenols. I have these two sets here. These Jensen's and these Quest are like the ideal crimp masters. Uh, you can actually order these tools as frames and then order die sets. So you can choose what frame you want and then order a die set. I actually found these independently and then realized that they were actually the same tool. Everything looks similar, but there are differences. These long handle ones are high torque. You can see they have shorter jaws compared to the fulcrum, so you get more leverage. And then, of course, if we realign that, we can see we have about an inch longer handle. So uh, I did a review of these uh, Jensen's, but with these dies in it, because Harbor Freight sells a, a knockoff version of these with the common style wire, wire terminals, and they're really going to be the best, your best bet. Those Harbor Freight ones that are in this style uh, are the best wire crimpers I've seen really at any retail store, even though they're, the Harbor Freight ones aren't that great. These crimpers really do work properly if you use them properly, and they're pretty easy to use. And they provide a nice additional feature, which is the wide jaws will crimp the little plastic portion on the back to act as a strain relief. And that's one of the reasons I encourage the use of those over many other styles of wire crimpers. With these, it's real easy. You always stick the terminal in the colored side of the jaws. So here, and once again, we can put it, you know, we just make sure it's aligned flat, whether it's up or down. I usually put it down. Let's see if I can't do this without. There we go. One thing to make note of is you really want the front of the terminal to be aligned real flush. You don't want it sticking out too far because you kind of want these back jaws to do the little crimping thing. And some terminals are a little bit short like this. I think these are Burndy brand terminals. And then as soon as you get it in there, sometimes on some of these you can get one click out of the ratchet and it'll hold the terminal nice and tight. 
sometimes like on uh, these long handle quests that spacing between the clicks is too much and it starts to crimp it so you can't put the wire in but you just get a couple clicks and what I like about these long handles is you get all that extra leverage and you just whoop. why is this not opening I just didn't have the ratchet adjusted. What's nice about these ratcheting ones is in situations where you find that, oh, okay, it's going too far or isn't going far enough. They have these little cam wheels, and this is like uh, adjusting suspension on alignment on a car. You can pull out the screw and move this little wheel to adjust where the ratchet release is to make sure you always get an optimal crimp each time. And then this is the style crimp that they make. They make they do use a half moon, but it's still pretty good because it's really wide. It's a slight compromise from those. Those using these blue terminals, the 14 gauge wire end terminals makes like a near perfect or textbook crimp. These are the next best thing. And I can't believe Harbor Freight really sells ones that are like this. But these are exact style crimps. If you had an un uninterruptible power supply or any number of equipment, when you, you know, open up the control box, these are the style crimps that you would find in there. And that's the kind of the purpose is using the same thing that factories use. Now these, you know, you, they crimp the back of it. So you have this nice little strain release. See how it kind of pinches it right around the insulation. And that's actually a really nice crimp. It's super tight very reliable the plastic hasn't been you know the plastic does get mush but it still provides an awesome crimp and provides a kind of integrated strain relief but in comparison to that these are amphenols and they're 16 and 14 gauge and these are long handle crimpers that are designed exactly for just blue terminals only but they provide a wonderful crimp they're actually adjustable. That little strain relief portion, these are split jaws on this. And they have these little pins that if you need to, you can pull out and put in different holes. And these holes are drilled offset, so it'll move these outer jaws so that and you can see how they wobble a little bit. So that kind of crimping portion on the back for the wire uh, as a strain relief, you can adjust just right so it doesn't crush the insulation, but it gets tight enough. And we'll demonstrate these. They're actually pretty incredible. And a lot of these, all these crimpers are on eBay all the time. It's really surprising. So no real reason not to get any. These have like a little finger here um, that helps hold the terminal. So it's easier to get in there. It acts as a little stop. You can see I actually overstripped the wire so in a style like this it doesn't really doesn't like to overstrip the wires see how far I have that out it's not wanting to actually god if I could stay in focus for once allow the terminal to get all the way forward but that's what's nice about these is they have a stop so you just get in there push the terminal forward it, and the little finger ensures that it stays horizontal you start crimping and it gets a little bit of pressure and then you just run them for a cycle and these work real reliably and then they provide this uh, what would be considered an optimum style crimp they actually have uh, real special expensive cut dies that have this little cutout in the middle so unlike just you know standard ones excuse me that's those amps that's the Jensen's or the Quest where they're just a flat terminal they these actually have a cutout so they provide a convolution so you have extra holding power that means on the inside of the crimp there's actually two little crimps and then like a little bump for the wire to get caught into and these hold super duper well and then they also provide that same function of integrating a strain relief so that's what you know perfect or real high quality crimpers these would be considered uh some of the very best <clears throat> But there's always an argument because you can always compare those amp, this amp crimp compared to this amp crimp, which is a spherical crimp. Uh, it's pretty hard to, it's a pretty big debate between both of those, I'm sure. And one last demonstration, we, I'll actually take this little terminal here, which we crimped the 14 gauge terminal with the 14 gauge wire with the spherical crimp on it. So we already know it has a perfect crimp, uh, super tight. These half moon style really I, this will be a good demonstration because we're going to use these bolt cutter style ones because we haven't even used them 
and we're going to actually recrimp this terminal. We already know that it's crimped perfectly. And this is the difference in shape. I'm already tight. And we know that's the one that was just crimped with these, with the spherical ones, with the perf, you know, super tight. We just squashed the beans out of that thing and actually really upset it. That's a, we, you know, we went downhill there. But that just kind of shows the difference between a spherical crimp and an elliptical crimp. Elliptical crimps really can't hold a candle to spherical crimps. So whenever I'm using specifically 14 gauge wire, these seem to work okay with 16 gauge, but for whatever reason, the sizing isn't quite as perfect. But when it comes to 14 gauge, I mean, uh, if I ever have 14 gauge, I just remember I have these because it really uh, provides the perfect crimp. Anyway, that was kind of the end of a review and comparison of various professional grade crimps and kind of showing what some of the differences, the intrinsic differences of them are. The one last thing I'll mention is all these, even these bolt cutter style were like $50. Uh, these Jensen's or the Associated Quests, these are going to run you in the $75 range, depending on how you get them. You know, you can get just a frame for fifty or sixty dollars, and one set of dies for you know twenty bucks. Uh, if you want the whole deal, you can get a frame and a set of five dies, and that you know it's a well over a hundred. These amps right here, uh, these are an older pair, uh, but they still make styles like these, and they're all over a hundred dollars. That would be brand new retail from just a standard you know MSC or you know some kind of major uh, reseller. But these crimpers are expensive, and that's why you don't see them much. And versus the plate steel ones like those, you know, ideals, even if you bought these nice amps, those would be like 15 bucks, maybe 20 bucks. These ideals, maybe $20, $30 or so. Um, big price difference between something like this, which can strip and cut bolts and crimp. Versus having a tool that you end up spending seventy to a hundred dollars for, and all it does is crimp wires, or even ones like these, where you spend the same amount of money, and they only crimp one specific wire terminal blue, or even ones like this that are not just one terminal, but you know a real a specific gauge, fourteen gauge in a blue terminal. But the more specialized you get, the higher the quality, of the specific tasks that you're doing uh, ends up becoming. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching uh, and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Caddis Maximus out.